This is a picture of one of the Faroe Islands, which is an autonomous territory of Denmark, they lie between Scotland and Iceland. This is another of those beautiful Faroe Islands, which evoke a picture of green wonderness and gives one a want to visit. Here we have a wonderful shot of one of the 1000s of fjords in Norway, very nice when the sun is shining but absolutely stunning when there is snow around. This is a glorious shot of the Houses of Parliament, here in London, a place that almost everybody in the world knows or has heard about. Here is another great shot of Big Ben, with thousands of commuters, going about their business, across the London Bridge. This is one of the hundreds, of castles that are left abandoned in Scotland, where lots of battles were won and lost, by the chieftains and their armies. Now we move to the Dinah's Head, on the Pembrokeshire coast in Wales, a beautiful country, where dragons are said to roam, and people speak a very different language. Here is the famous transporter bridge, across the River Tees, not working at the moment. The 120-year-old bridge is only one of six left in the world. A funding circle has been set up, to raise the three million pounds needed to restore it. This is a picture of the River Tyne, with three of the five bridges across at this point. The high-level railway bridge, is thought to be the most notable historical engineering work in the city. Built by the Hawkes family in 1849, it was designed by Robert Stevenson to form a rail link to Scotland. Plans have been unveiled, to develop a new £90 million quay, at South Bank, on the River Tees, to help make Teesside the UK's premier offshore wind location. The new South Bank Quay, will completely transform, a one-kilometre area along the River Tees, providing global firms, with direct access into the heart of 500 acres, of development land, with thousands more across the wider Teesworks site, straight from the North Sea. The new heavy lift key, which will support 100 jobs in the construction phase, will provide crucial access from the River Tees, to the 4.5 million square feet of manufacturing, storage and office space on the South Bank. Here we have a wonderful shot, of some of the numerous small ships moored in Hartlepool docks. The beginning of the docks in the Hartlepools goes back to the late 18th century. At the time Hartlepool was a small coastal town whose inhabitants for the most part, made their living from fishing. The town had been important in the Middle Ages, when the Bishop of Durham had used it as a port to import his supplies. Since then the inland harbour had fallen into serious disrepair. It silted up and even had crops growing on it. In 1795 the population of Hartlepool was only about 1,000.
This is one of the many larger ships, to visit the Irvine Quay, in Hartlepool. She is the 25,000-ton, Goth Oldendorf, bulk carrier, leaving the port accompanied by the tug, Marksman.